Hello, my name is Dr. Lauren Madigan. I am a dermatologist at the University of Utah and also work in collaboration with the Huntsman Cancer Institute. Today, I would like to take this opportunity to discuss with you a condition called Vexus syndrome, which has been relatively recently described and we're continuing to evolve our understanding of. So what is Vexus syndrome? A Vexus uh, is an acronym. It stands for vacuoles, E1 enzyme, X-linked autoinflammatory somatic syndrome. This was first described in a cohort of 25 adult men from the National Institutes of Health. And what they characterized is an acquired autoinflammatory condition that preferentially affects older adults and men. This results from a mutation in the UBA1 gene, which lies on the X chromosome. And essentially this mutation results in increased activation of the innate immune system and widespread inflammation driven by mutant myeloid cells. Why do I as a dermatologist care about Vexus syndrome? I care because cutaneous disease is actually exceedingly common. In the initial cohort, it was 88% of patients, and across cohorts published since, it consistently is above 80%. Commonly, this presents as neutrophilic inflammation in the skin or neutrophilic dermatitis that often looks pretty indistinguishable from classic sweet syndrome. We can also see vasculitis or vasculopathy presenting as purpura or in patients with larger and vessel involvement, nodules or ulceration. And then chondritis is also often very commonly present in anywhere from 36 to 60% of patients, which is why a lot of these patients were actually labeled as relapsing polychondritis, sweets, or vasculitis before this disease was really um, recognized in that cohort. So the next question is, which patients should we consider testing for that UBA1 mutation? And I think there are some helpful clinical clues, which I'll walk you through in terms of which patients should you really consider. Uh, the first is demographic. So this is a disease that preferentially affects older adults. There has been one case to date identified in a patient under the age of 40, but generally most patients are going to present over the age of 40 up until their 80s, often with unfortunately a diagnostic delay. Because this lies on the X chromosome, men are going to be preferentially affected, though there are increasing case reports of women with aneuploidy or without that have developed Vexus syndrome. Another important clue, because the morphologies can look very similar to other diseases, as we mentioned, is the presence of more than one morphology together. For example, if you have a patient who has neutrophilic dermatitis, but they also have chondritis or vasculitis, that might increase your level of suspicion for this disease and warrant testing. It's not to say, however, that all of these features will present simultaneously. So it's not uncommon for a patient to start off with chondritis or neutrophilic dermatitis and then develop other features of the disease over time. Um, so it's important to follow these patients longitudinally and, and as new features present, really kind of go back to your initial diagnosis and think, should this patient be tested? Unfortunately, oftentimes what is the biggest clue for us is treatment resistance. This cohort is characterized by a very high incidence of resistance to many of the therapies that we would use for diseases um, such as sweets or chondritis. And unfortunately, many of these patients end up on very high dose or prolonged prednisone courses, which contributes to the potentially high morbidity and mortality of this disease, which was 40% in the initial cohort. So if you have a patient who you have on good therapy and they're not responding, again, another patient you might consider. Of course, this is also a multi-systemic disease, so it doesn't only present in the skin. And so those other features of disease can be extremely helpful. Most patients are going to complain of constitutional symptoms such as non-infectious fever or fatigue. About 40% of patients across cohorts have thrombosis. So a patient who's presenting um, with a deep venous thromboembolism might be somebody, or thrombosis or thromboembolism might be somebody to consider. Generally, these patients are also characterized by hematologic abnormalities, frequently presenting as cytopenias, the most common macrocytic anemia, but they can also have frank myelodysplastic syndrome, myeloid malignancies, or lymphoproliferative disorders. Other disease uh, organ systems can also be involved. Uh, very frequently, we see pulmonary um, involvement in these patients. They can get arthritis or arthralgias, ocular involvement, but really almost any organ system can be impacted and we should have really thoughtful screening for these patients and can be again another important clue to diagnosis. 
So I hope you take away from this short video a better understanding of what Vexus syndrome is and that you will consider testing for Vexus in adult patients, particularly men who have features of autoinflammation, who may have hematologic abnormalities such as those cytopenias or myelodysplesis, and particularly those who have those cutane, uh, characteristic cutaneous lesions, including neutrophilic dermatitis, vasculitis, and chondritis. So I hope you found this information to be helpful and thank you for joining me today.